quickly from each person up here on the panel, piggybacking on that question, what is next? What do we do? Overwhelmingly in our survey, everyone says, talk less, do more. So what should be the next step? And I'm gonna start with you, Mr. Swan, if you don't mind. All right. Well, uh, there's, there's a couple of things that I, I've recognized over 40 years in public service, and that is I rarely, or if ever, have run into a public servant, whether it's in the school system, social services, police department, uh, in nonprofits. I've worked with several nonprofits as well. All of the people that have spoken today, they all want to do something good. They, they're here to do a good job. What, what I feel like we are lacking in, in, um, as, a, as a city and maybe as a community is I think we're lacking organizational and um, uh, an organization or a structure in which we can coordinate all of those efforts. And I think that there's a, there's a, path, there's a pathway forward to that. I've seen that done on small scales uh, here in the city uh, in the past, and I, I know that, uh, that it can be done again. And so um, I think that that is, is something we need to look forward to moving forward, and that is creating some type of structure within the city that can coordinate not only law enforcement, uh, but the nonprofit organizations and social service organizations and create a collaboration between those so that they can leverage one another's skills. And what I mean by that is the police department, the uh, police officers are out there on the street and they see just about everything there is to see. Uh, some, but however, sometimes they're not they don't have the skill set or the uh, resources to address all of those things. Or the school system may run into something that they can't quite address. So I know they're going to do what they can with what they have for what their, their mission calls for, but we need to be able to exchange that information across, um, uh, across the agencies so that we can get the right resources to the right people at the right time and create an intervention before the police department has to respond to a homicide on the street. And so I think, I think that um, having worked with some of the leaders up here, I know that, uh, that the wherewithal to make that happen exists. And so I, th I think that that's something we might want to consider moving forward. Yeah, and basically a solution to what Cruz Sherman said earlier about all of these silos that we currently yeah. have. And uh, Ms. Simmons Williams, I know that you already gave us about four things that you felt we needed to work on. Um, just really quick, maybe just one extra or one additional comment that you have as far as next steps. Well, basically the thing that I just whispered in Ms. McEachin's ear over here, <laughs> get rid of the silos and the technologies and the communications. All right, wonderful. So um, what can everybody here do? Here is what I challenge you to do. If you are paying for your child's cell phone, I challenge you to tell your child, I want to see your, your cell phone and I want your password. I challenge you as a parent to take responsibility for the cell phone that you are paying for that your child has in school, on the streets, on the bus, everywhere, and actually look and see what your child is doing. That's my challenge. All right. Who's going to take the challenge? Yeah. All right. Ms. Samuels? Um, um, for me, being a teacher, so mine is going to be revolved around school, so um, for me, I want to see more, um, I'm not sure, but you know, it's a lot of guns being brought into the schools, and the particular school I work, we don't have like metal detectors or nothing. We have nothing that will let us know that this child brought that gun into the school today, you know, before they can even do anything with it, you know? So I really think maybe we should start metal detectors and maybe in each school maybe at the doors as people walk through we could catch the guns as they walk it through knife anything anything that they're not supposed to have maybe we could catch it at the door you know so that i would have to say um more security in the schools um that is a big thing a child safety and not having enough security is not not it and just locking the doors just so can't nobody get in school because you know you only have one security guard that's not it either um so because the parents are feeling unsafe because they can't get in to see why they can't, you know, get to their, their child or get to the office to see why, you know, what's going on. So that, and then I would say, like, listening ears, you know, more people that want to listen, that want to be there for the child, 
not just coming to work, oh, to get a paycheck, but actually teachers that actually want to change a child's life. That's what we need in the school system. A teacher that wants to sit down and listen, to know what's wrong with the student, to help them learn, because blockages can prevent a child from wanting to learn. And I, somebody said that, you know, they skip in because they don't want to be in this class. Yeah, because the class is not interesting. Or the, the teacher is, you know, they don't get along with the teacher they're in because the teacher, you know, you just don't get along. So things like that, just some people who want to listen. Um, also, I think it starts at the top. I think it starts with the principals. I think it starts with sister principals. I think it starts with that um, hiring, hiring the right person to do the job. That's what I think. Um, I don't know, not saying that these principals don't do their job, but I have been at schools where I don't think the, the principals or the sister principals are being very effective when it comes to the regulation of the school in a day. So I've seen things happen, the students get into things and get in trouble and um, get sent to the office but get sent right back to the classroom because the principal don't know how to handle the situation. I've seen it. No consequences, no suspension, no nothing. So I think it starts at the top. It starts with the principals, it starts with the principals, and it also starts with everybody being on one accord. The principals and the teachers needs to be on the same page. It cannot be the principals on this page and the teachers on another. The school is never going to be even, which is going to cause more problems, and you don't want the students to see that we're not even or not on the same page because that's going to cause a problem also. So I think that too. Um, but I feel like those are my points right, on okay. today. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Chief, what can we do next? Well, I think uh, Ms. McEachin's statement can't be understated. Uh, I, I can tell you that when we see our murders and when our investigators are looking at many of those, you see it play out on those phones and on the social media. And I know those parents who are who have learned about that, wish they could go back in time and some, sometimes intervene. But the overarching thought, when I, when I look around this room, I see a lot of people that want to help. You wouldn't be here if, if you weren't. So we all have a role. When I, when, someone once gave me advice on how to make things better in our city, and he said, do what you do. And I thought, well, what, what do I do? I'm, I'm a police officer, so I'm going to do that to the best of my ability. I'm going to go out and protect people. I'm going to lead these officers so that we can, we can make a difference in our city. We have a lot of people that, that are in this realm, uh, whether it's the many nonprofits uh, that are in this room right now that all have a role in that. The regular citizens, the broken men. I, I haven't met you, but I've, I've seen you on the news. What a, what a powerful program you guys have. Um, and, and I can tell you there, there's many other groups like that. So do what you do to help make life a bit better for our city. RPS, uh, Mr. Camera said it as well too, and I didn't fully appreciate how important our schools are to our kids because it's not just education. It is therapy. It is an adult to care about you. It is a meal and how important that is to our kids learning. So everyone, and, and the media too for organizing this. So CBS, thank you for doing this because we're reaching our community. You're doing what, what you do to help make our city better. So that's what I would just, say to everyone in here, find something that you can do to make the lives uh, a, a bit better for our, for our people in our city. Robert Bowen, what's next? Sure, the, the easiest answer for me to say is to invest more in mental health supports, but it, that's really not the answer. I think the Chief spoke to it, everybody on this um, panel has talked about it today, is we need to really connect to our children. And, and the most powerful thing that we can do for a kid is to tell them that we love them right. and commit to yeah. them. Right. And there should not be any child in our community who does not have an adult that is connected to him or her or they and that loves them. Bible, basic instructions before leaving earth. Okay. To the believers, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from your evil ways, and then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. My eyes will now be open and my ears will be attentive to prayer from this place.
Okay, it's not fair to go after Cruz. <laughs> Truly, I, I would echo everything everybody said and I would just add three more things. Vote, vote, and vote. Yes. Yes. Yes.